Hey everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and in this video, I'm gonna help all of our Studio One users. Have you ever worked on a song and worked on a session, closed that session, and then at a later time went to open it and you see this box in front of you? the locating missing, mixing files box and you go, oh my goodness, where's all my audio? And you look and all the audio is gone. What happened? Well, if this has happened to you before, and I know it has because I talk to students every week and at least one student a week has this problem and doesn't know why. And I'm gonna show you today how this happens, why it happens, and then most importantly, how to avoid it and, have, and how to do some housekeeping, if you will, to make sure that you understand the file and the folder structure with Studio One. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to solve this problem for you so you never have this issue again. Before we get to that, though, if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. And also, if this is your first time here, I want you to go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I want to give you a $50 free mixing course. It's my gift to you for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you're a Studio One user, that mixing course is done in the new version, Studio One version five. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you another free gift, especially for people who are into Studio One and would like some Studio One specific training. I got something for you, so stick around to the end of the video. So here we are in the beloved Studio One. This is version five, but this could be any version. Okay, so you worked on a session, you recorded your musical masterpiece, you worked on it, you closed it down for the day, and then at a later time, the next day, a week later, you go to open up your session that you were working on to continue on that musical masterpiece. And this is the box that you get, and you go, oh my goodness, what happened? Where's all my audio? What do you mean I'm missing all kinds of files? How does this happen? I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm gonna close this for a second. And then when you close it, you'll see that this session has no more audio. Where is it? I hit play, nothing happens. Oh my goodness, what happens? No worries, let me show you. So the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna minimize this for a second and I wanna show you the folder structure in Studio One and how you create a song and all of that stuff, which we've talked about in other videos. And by the way, this tip, along with many, many other tips around how to use and navigate and understand the basic functions of Studio One are in my PreSona Studio One Beginner's Guide. You'll see an image come up on the screen here. You go out to the website, Home Recording Made Easy, you can pick up that course and it'll help you with these sorts of things. And again, stick around to the end of the videos. I'm gonna give you a special discount on that course and others as well. So let me minimize this for a second here and I wanna show you something. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go out to my drive here and I'm gonna open up this session, the original session here just so you can see it, okay? So here is the folder structure. I'm gonna open this. Okay, so here is the session with all the audio files recovered, okay? So you're working on your session and you save it for the first time, okay? You recorded a bunch of stuff and you saved it. Or if you, let's say you're mixing and someone sent you a bunch of audio files and you imported those audio files into Studio One and then you went to save it and then you close it down and the next time it's not there. So the first thing I want you to make sure that you check before we move on is if you're on a Mac, I want you to go up to Studio One, I want you to go to the Preferences window. And if you're on a PC, I believe you go to the Options, which is somewhere over here on the right side and you go down to the Studio One uh, or you come over to Studio One and go down to the Options menu. PC is a little different than Mac, I'm not really sure why, but in any event, you wanna get to this screen here. Once you figure out where to get it on the Windows side, you're gonna come up to the screen right here, the Preferences window. And on the Preferences window, I want you to go to Locations. And under the Locations, there is this thing called a User tab, User Data. Now, these are a really important box here that you wanna make sure that you have checked. There's actually two here. The first one is Autosave. I highly recommend that you autosave if it's not enabled already and you can choose whatever time increments you want. I usually do two minutes. But the most important box, which is not checked when you install Studio One, it's you have to go in and set this up, and you only have to set it up once, and it's a global setting, it'll always be here, is ask to copy external files when saving song. You wanna make sure this is checked. This is for when you import uh, files, like I said, some WAV files or MP3 files, and let's say you're gonna mix and someone sent you some files and you're gonna import those files into Studio One. When If this is not checked, when you save the session the first time, it's just gonna save, okay? And wherever those 
audio files came from, let's say it was on a folder on your desktop and you imported them from your desktop, you saved Studio One, this box wasn't checked, you just saved it and everything looked like it saved perfectly. And then you say, well, I don't need those audio files on my desktop anymore in the folder. I've already imported them into Studio One. I'm just gonna trash them and delete them. No problem. When you go to open up that song file again, if this wasn't checked, what's going to happen is Studio One is going to look for that original folder that was on your desktop for those files, and it's not going to see it there, and therefore you're going to get that missing file box, okay? That is super important. So if you have this checked, when you you just hit OK, and you only have to do it once, then when you import audio files into Studio One for the first time, and you go to save it for the first time, a little dialog box is gonna pop up and it's gonna ask you, do you wanna copy files to the media folder? And you're gonna say yes. And what that's gonna do, it is gonna take a duplicate copy of the files that you just imported from your desktop in this example. And it is gonna create a media folder here next to your Studio One song folder. And in that media folder is gonna have all the files, okay? Then the next time you go to open Studio One and you open up this session file, it is pulling the files from the media folder. It's not looking to that desktop folder that you had when you originally imported the files. Does that make sense? Okay. Studio One will look to the media folder. And, in, and if the files are in the media folder, you're going to be fine. You won't get that missing lo file location uh, error box that I showed you at the beginning of this video. That is super important. So once again, let me show you where this is. On a Mac, you go to Studio One Preferences. It's under Locations, under User Data. You want this checked. You only have to check it once. And then every time from this point forward, when you import audio into your session, the first time you save the session, you will get a little box, a little message box that says, do you want to copy the files? And you're going to say yes. It's gonna ask you that because you checked off this box that said ask to copy external files when saving song. And it only happens the first time. After you've copied it once, you never that box won't come up again for that session. Okay, does that make sense? On a PC, again, the Studio One menu, I believe is over here under options, or it's over towards the right hand side. And I think it's Studio One, and then when you click Studio One, it doesn't say preferences, I believe it says options. But in any event, when you open it, it will look just like this. It's the preferences window, but the settings are exactly the same, okay? So that's the first thing you wanna do. Now, another big problem that a lot of people have is they'll say, okay, I've done that, I saved it, everything is good, I have my media folder now and all my files are in there. And when I open this again, it's gonna pull from the media folder, no problem. Now I get up, now the problem comes up where people say, well, you know, Dave, I have all of these things on my, uh, internal C drive, and I want to move all my sessions to an external drive, or I want to take this session folder now and I want to move it to somewhere else on my computer. And the number one mistake that people make is they come to the folder, they'll copy this, the song file, the little Studio One, you know, icon here. They'll go, they'll go copy, and they'll come over here. Where is it? Copy, and they'll move it, and they'll say, "I'm going to move it to another drive." And for example, I'm going to put it on my desktop, and they're going to paste the item here. Okay, and then when they go to open that file, it's not, it's gonna be missing the folder, okay? You don't wanna do that. Whenever, I'm gonna delete this. Whenever you wanna copy and you wanna move the Studio One session, you have to make sure that you move this and you move all the associated folders that come with it. And they'll typically, don't forget, disregard this reference track, that's something else. You will see a media folder. You will see a history folder if you have autosave, okay? What you want and you'll have a cache folder. Sometimes there'll be stuff in it, sometimes there won't be, you'll have all the images. These four files, three folders in a file, all have to go lockstep together, okay? So if you're gonna move this song file, you wanna move it all along with it to whatever location you move it to and whatever folder you put it in. And there, you'll never have a problem because Studio One, the song file, is looking for these three additional folders to pull all of its information from, okay? So you have to make sure that you copy everything, not just the song file. Because if you take the song file, you move it to another drive, and then somehow these folders get deleted or get changed to another location, 
When you open this again, it won't be able to find your media folder. Okay, that's important. Okay, so that's something you want to make sure that you, you're careful of. You grab all of them. And what I do is I grab all of them and put them in another folder. If you see, if I go back here, you see I have a main directory. That's Joel Norman, which is the name of the artist. If I open this, here's all the files that reside that, that come with it. So I make sure that these four image, these four folders and images are in an external directory. And then I could take this and I could put this anywhere. I can move this, put it on my desktop, put it on an external drive, put it on a thumb drive, bring it into another computer. When I open it, if I open my song file again, as long as these three things are with it and everything is in your media folder, because when you imported, you checked off that little box, you'll have no problem at all. Okay. That's one thing you want to do. The other thing that you can do when you're saving, let's say now you're working on this session, okay, and you're working on it and it's on your desktop, for example, and you say, okay, I want to, I want to put this, can I save this to another drive? You can, okay? Some people will do save as, which you can do. I don't like save as. Whenever I want to make an absolute duplicate copy of the session to another place on my computer, Okay, I always use save to new folder, save to new folder. Let me show you. It'll open up. You can put it wherever you want. I'll put it on my desktop. I can call it whatever I want here and I can just, I'll just say test so I know. So I'm going to put it on my desktop. Okay. Watch what happens. It's going to make a copy. Oh, I did it really quickly. I hope you saw that down here in the right-hand corner, it makes it a duplicate copy of every single audio file, every single image. If I uh, do this, here it is right here. And there's all my media folders. You see that? It makes an absolute copy. So it not only copies the song file, it copies any other appropriate fo folders and files that it needs. So now again, you can take this file and you can put it anywhere, thumb drive, external drive, different computer, whatever and you'll always have everything kept intact, okay? When you do save as, it doesn't make a duplicate of the media folder. It only makes a duplicate of the session file. You can do it that way as long as you don't move the media folder. Does that make sense? I know it could be a little confusing and so you gotta be careful. So there are several ways that you can do what I just showed you. I just showed you two different ways to save things and make sure everything stays intact. I typically always use save to new folder. Then I know I'm getting an absolute duplicate and I'm putting it somewhere different and it retains the original in case I ever need to go back to that. I do the same thing when I'm saving versions of songs. If this is Rev A and I made a bunch of changes or a totally different mix or add a bunch of different plugins and I wanna keep this intact, but I wanna save the new, I wanna make a duplicate of this session with all my changes like Rev A, Rev B, I would go to save to new folder. That's how I would do it. That's how I would do it. That allows me to have a complete duplicate and it keeps everything straight in my head. And it also makes sure that you retain the integrity of these media folders to this song file. Okay. So I hope that makes sense for everybody. And I hope that helps solve this problem because this comes up a lot. I get emails about this all the time where you open up a session, it's all, I, I close the error message and everything is blank and you can't find the files. That's why, because somewhere along the way, even though you didn't realize you did it, you separated that media folder from the song file and they got disconnected. Somehow, some way it got, even if you didn't delete it, even if you just moved it to another drive or to a different location, you have to keep the integrity of the song file to the media folder. If you do that and you use the save to new folder command, you'll never have a problem with missing files. And once again, before you do anything else, right now, stop the video, go open up Studio One and check off this box. Now again, this is only when you're importing external files, okay? If you're just recording into Studio One, you don't, this bot, it, when you first save it, it's not going to, the little message is not going to pop up and ask you if you want to copy external files because it's not an external file. You record it into Studio One. However, the folder structure 
And everything I just said about the media folder and about the song file, all of that still applies. Whether you recorded your own audio into Studio One or whether you imported audio to do some mixing or add files to your existing song, that folder integrity, that, that combination of the song file and the media folder, that relationship is exactly the same, okay? But do yourself a favor, check off this box. You only have to do it once. You don't have to do it for every session and you will be a-okay and you will never have that problem again. So I hope you found this video helpful. Again, this tip along with, and I go a little bit more in depth in the course, and there's also a lot of other tips around Studio One. If you're someone brand new to Studio One and you're still trying to figure out how to get around, how to set things up, how to save things, how to move things, how to just get around the basic functions of Studio One, I highly recommend you check out my pre-Sonus Studio One Beginner's Guide. It was updated in the late 2020, all for version five, but even if you have an older version of Studio One, a lot of the things will still apply to you. And again, because you stuck around to the end of the video, I wanna help you get that at a discounted price. So you need to go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. First thing you do is you download your free mixing course. 50 bucks, download it. It's a Studio One mixing course. We use all stock plugins, you're really gonna dig it. Then I want you to go over to the training courses page on the website, go to the PreSonus Studio One training page. I have a whole curriculum on just Studio One training. Check out the beginner's guide or any of the other courses on my website. And I wanna give you a 25% discount. I want you to use the coupon code YouTube25 at checkout, that'll take 25% off. If you're new to Studio One and you want more tips like the one I just showed you today, check out the beginner's guide. It has helped tens of thousands of people get up and running in Studio One very quickly and help save them some of the frustration. So I want you to do that today. Also, leave some comments below and let me know if you have any other really cool tips in Studio One to help uh, solve some frustrations or things that you found along the way and you found some workarounds and some tips. I'd love you to help me and start a conversation, help out all of our fellow Studio One users by leaving a comment below. And until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.